Today's scripture lesson is Luke chapter 2, verses 41 through 52. Now every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents were unaware of this. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journeys. Then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard them were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously looking for you. He said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. And his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Deshauna. The only thing worse than being the last thing between the people and lunch is, as my child just reminded me, being the last thing between the people and lunch and inflatables. So the parents in the room will know that children keep us humble. What a delight to have so many young people involved in our service today. Thank you to each and every one of you, to all of our musicians. Um, it is good to be all together. Since I don't have to preach three times, it's okay, I'm just gonna preach three times the length and, uh, and all will be well. So the thing about being married to the Teachable Moment leader is um, he gives all the spoiler alerts, but that's okay, because we really wanted him to. Today, we, we just wanna focus on Jesus being a kid. When we think about who Jesus was on this earth, the images that come to mind are often of the baby or of the grown man Jesus, the teacher, the healer, the gatherer of the disciples. But, and the Bible is, that's what the Bible gives us, really. We have images and stories of Jesus as a baby, and then scripture gets very quiet about him until this passage. And this passage often gets missed because it only comes up in the uh, lectionary appointed readings um, every once in a while in like the Sunday after Christmas. Then scripture is quiet again and all of a sudden Jesus is a grown man. So this is the one precious story that we have of Jesus's early life and all of scripture is true. And so it has a word for us today. What can we know about Jesus from this story? Oh, first of all, that Jesus was a kid. One of the other things is that most of the disciples were actually young men. We think of them as older men. We knew Jesus was in his 30s, but many of the disciples were as young as 18. But Jesus himself lived this uh, life that all of us did at one point, and some of us still are. There's nobody here that wasn't a kid. And so also our Lord, God on earth, and in this passage, we learn a few things that are, you know, natural about kids and almost universal. Jesus did his own thing. He stressed his parents out. He got in trouble. He was somewhere he was not supposed to be. Jesus lived our whole human existence. There are some other things, though, that we can learn about Jesus from this story his family prayed and worshiped together. They were a faithful family. They went to the temple. They celebrated the festivals. Even Jesus needed teachers and mentors. Even Jesus needed teachers and mentors. Jesus learned as he grew, and Jesus asked questions. Jesus asked questions. What questions do you have about scripture? What questions do you have about the life of faith? Do you wonder what Jesus thought about? Did Jesus have doubts? We know he had questions. 
I find this revelation that Jesus learned over time somewhat astounding because we don't think about it that often. Because Jesus was God, he was all-knowing. But even God in human flesh grew in wisdom. He studied the scriptures. He learned. Science today is helping us know more and more about our own brains and about how we learn and about our capacity to learn. One of the discoveries is that there is way more change that happens in our brain than we previously understood. Even that which we consider our natural intelligence, which used to be more um, understood as more of a fixed asset, uh, something you had a certain amount of or not, even that is something that is dynamic rather than static. So the more we do learn, the more we can learn. And the more we can learn, the more we do learn. We have long thought it was a great compliment to kids to tell them that they're smart. And we all like to be told we're smart, truth, truth be told. But we know now that when we praise children and probably adults for their effort, for what they put into it, the effort that they put into learning, for working hard, for asking questions like Jesus did, for pursuing knowledge and answers, that they respond with greater effort and greater achievement. The more we try to learn, the more we can learn. Science and education calls this a growth mindset. Many of you, especially the educators and the children here, I know that that is something we talk about in our schools, which is wonderful. It's been shown over and over that when we focus on learning from our mistakes, Accepting challenges and focusing on growth, we will in fact learn and grow and succeed at higher rates. Our brains, rather than having a fixed amount of intelligence, are capable of being shaped by the effort we invest in our learning. Every time we meet a new learning challenge, whatever it is, no matter how old you are, new pathways can be carved out in our brains. And when we embrace and meet the next challenge, that pathway is opened up even more. Now, Jesus didn't need science to tell him all of this. Jesus learned and he grew as he asked questions, as he sought out mentors. As we celebrate and pray for our students going back to school, may we all embrace a new mindset and a heart set of learning, of learning about God the Father like Jesus did, through God's word, by asking questions like Jesus did, by seeking out teachers and mentors like Jesus did. And let us all, from the youngest to the oldest, grow in wisdom like Jesus did. And may we embrace an attitude and spiritual disposition of learning and growing as we move forward in our spiritual lives. I found this list on nurturing a growth mindset that I think applies um, to our spiritual journey as well. There are five points that I thought were helpful. To nurture this growth mindset, it says, listen to the mindset voice inside of you. And what, what I say about the spiritual journey is let God be the mindset voice inside of you. I created you in my image. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. God says, yes, you can do all things because I will strengthen you. I have spoken to you in my word and I speak to you now. Seek me, ask questions of me, know me. Let that be our mindset voice, the voice of God. Another way to develop a, um, a growth mindset is recognize that you have a choice. There are many voices calling out to us, not just our young people, but all of us. There's a voice that says you're not good enough. There's a voice that says you have to be perfect and have it all together, but the voice of God says you are my beloved. And in you, I am well pleased. 
You are my masterpiece. Come to me and learn from me. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Then evidently, if we talk back to the inner voice with a mindset voice, we can develop this growth uh, mindset so we can talk back to God. God, I love you and I want to know you. God, how can you help me learn all the things that you need me to know? When we practice, there are countless ways that you learn about God like Jesus did. And all of this comes with an ongoing practice. Attend church. Be with Aaron in his Bible study. Be with others to say, how is it with your soul? The way that the, some of you do that here at Millbrook, I think is the spiritual anchor of our church. Read and study God's word, ask questions, ask God, ask Jesus, ask the Holy Spirit, ask each other. And find help is the last. Find help. Jesus went to the temple, he studied with the rabbis, and he asked them questions. Find the person who can help you. Hopefully it's more than just one. When there is someone you trust, even one person, someone whose life reflects the love of God, they can help you. Even Jesus did not do it alone. Friends, all of us are on a journey of learning and growing in our lives and in our faith. Today, we especially bless those of you that are going back to school, teachers, administrators, students, but all of us can always learn and grow in God's word and God's love, and we can better know God's grace. No matter who we are or what we have done, how we have failed, we can always begin again with Jesus Christ. And remember that God came to us in Jesus as so many things, but among them as a kid, a kid who asked questions, a kid who learned, and may we all be inspired to learn and grow in the goodness of God's grace. Amen. Amen.